Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell and this is Nish Kumar Singh. Today we are talking about another segment of the Agile methodology where we need to understand that how exactly planning happens as a part of the Agile methodology. When it comes to the planning, of course, we have various plannings happening here, unlike the traditional approaches. Where traditional approaches just had one particular planning in the beginning, here in Agile, unlike traditional, we conduct planning two times. One is the overall release planning and the second one is the sprint planning, which is also called as iteration plan. Where release planning is mainly about talking of the overall release plan, that how exactly we will be breaking them into different segments, that is different sprints and how we will be covering all the details as a part of overall release and how exactly that will be processed in terms of accepting the changes as well from time to time and doing reworks and doing all those regression test as a part of continuous integration and lot many other things. But yes, when it comes to sprint, as the sprint is smaller cycle of the same, we will have a separate planning session for that. So let's understand today a little more about these two plannings within Agile projects. In this tutorial, we will be considering release planning and sprint planning. In order to understand that, you have to just recall from the previous tutorial that we understood some of the ceremonies which included two different release planning iterations, where the first iteration was for the release and second iteration for the sprint. Now the same will be elaborated in more details in order to understand how release planning is different from sprint and what kind of contribution they can have when working within an agile development model. To begin with release planning, we have to understand the release is end to end. And of course, a project planning can be replaced with release planning in agile methodology, where the release planning looks ahead to release the product often a few months ahead of the start of the project. Just like any other development model, the release planning is designed or created much earlier before the project can actually kick off. And at the same time, the release is about end-to-end -end product to be delivered to the customer and has the involvement of creating the schedule and allocating the resources, determining the timelines and a lot of such major factors which look forward to have end-to-end -end planning of the entire project. Release planning is also involved in defining and redefining the product backlog and may involve refining larger user stories into a collection of smaller stories. Now, release planning is something which is not just once defined, can also from time to time be redefined depending on the team's velocity and skill set. It's possible that some of the product items may further be broken down into simpler pieces if required if you think the project or user story which you have in your release is quite bigger to be handled at once. Release planning provides the basis for a test approach and test plan spanning of all iterations as well. We can also determine as a part of release planning that how long your iterations will be and how long your sprints will be in order to determine the velocity and understanding the estimates of different activities. Release plans are generally high level because in Agile we don't create anything concrete, nothing in detail because you know that a lot of things might change from time to time thus we don't want to waste a lot of time over the documentation. Just remember the Agile manifestos where we discuss about the same. In release planning, the business representatives establish and prioritize the user stories for the release in collaboration with the team. So team will be involved here and business representatives including the scrum master and everyone put together to prioritize the user stories to understand the same in order to be executed and completed from time to time. The next part of it is sprint planning which is specific to a particular sprint. So that's generally in Agile, we have two different plannings. One is for the overall project and second is for each sprint. Unlike traditional approaches here, for every single sprint, we do a proper planning. Now, okay, in this particular sprint, we will be covering these many tasks from the backlog and we will be expecting them to complete on time. But yes, at the same time, there might be a possibility that whether these tasks are accomplishable at this point of time or not. Or do you need any necessary information to complete them during the sprint? Is that any, having any kind of roadblocks compared to other tasks on the board? So that's what you will be doing as a part of sprint planning in order to make sure that you have all clear signals in order to pick a task in order to process them as a part of this particular 
sprint cycle. So in sprint planning, the team selects user stories from the prioritized release backlog, elaborates the user stories, perform a risk analysis for the other user stories, and estimate the work needed for each user story. If a user story is too vague and attempts to clarify it have failed, the team can refuse to accept it and use the next story based on the priority. Now that's additionally important. The team decides finally that what a task can be actually achieved. And of course, the team may have a lot of questions regarding the contradictions, omissions, and any kind of inconsistencies regarding the user stories. And if the attempts to get the clarity on that fails, the team can actually refuse and accept the other user story which can be taken into that particular sprint. The business representatives must answer the team's question about each user story so the team can understand what they should implement and how to test each story. So yes, the collaboration of business representative will help the team in order to understand that what should be done and how to meet the expected requirement and fulfill the need of the customer. The number of user stories selected is based on established team velocity and estimated size of the selected user story. So yes, the estimation and the velocity of the team does play a vital role here when selecting the number of stories. So not more than that, not nothing less than that. To maintain the velocity, you will select according to your pace. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to respond to your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.